thank you guys for being here. Um, first, I'd just like to start with a quick show of hands. How many of you have gotten to a whiteboard, tried to use a marker, and just found it to be completely dried out and unusable? Yeah, everyone. <laughs> Okay, so the topic that was, this problem was kind of assigned to me by the engineering college uh, to try and solve it and at least reduce uh, this irritation, this issue. So uh, the first goal was to design a dry erase utensil with an increased lifespan. So, uh, and the second goal was kind of to reduce the waste uh, from the disposal, of the disposal of these dry erase markers, right? So um, they're constantly... The, tip, the ink is evaporating from the tip, and you're having to throw them out uh, without really even using half of the ink. Um, so the main goal was to keep the ink in there longer, both so that the marker lasts longer, and so that uh, you can the plastic casing is not thrown out as often. Um, so our main goals for this project were to keep the cost below $1.25, to keep the weight below 20 grams, which is right around the weight of an Apple pencil, uh, we found that to be probably the heaviest writing utensil that uh, users find comfortable. Um, and our original goal was set to be at 150% of your typical Expo marker. And uh, lastly, the last constraint was that we wanted to be able to use it with one hand, the entire mechanism. Um, during our customer interviews, we found that the reason that a lot of these markers get left uncapped is because you know, teachers, professors, whoever, um, they're constantly having notes in one hand, writing with the other, and they don't want to be capping and uncapping with two hands the whole time. So uh, that leads to the marker being waved around in the air and the ink evaporating during the course of an hour, two hour long class. So the first thing that we did uh, with this project was some market research to see what was available and how we can improve upon it. So the first thing you'll see is just the standard Expo uh, marker on that, the top there. Uh, that was We cut through it to just open it up and see what's inside. So you'll see uh, the two sections of the casing and the cap on the left there. And then that black piece in the middle is really just a big, uh, dense piece of foam. The outside of it almost feels like a Slim Jim, but then when you get inside, it's just it's felt and it's soaked with ink. Really, really messy. Um, I had to clean the, the blade of the, <laughs> the tool we used. And then on the, the bottom there, you have what is called the Just Click Retractable Marker. So one of our first design uh, concepts when we brainstormed was you know, to have it like a clickable pen so the tip would retract. And we found that that actually already exists on the market, but with a really weak seal. So even though it's technically covered and you might not be able to see the tip, the ink is still able to evaporate uh, really easily through through that, that seal. Um, similar fell inside of there, uh, but it's a smaller cartridge, so it actually lasts uh, less time, even though the evaporation is slowed. So uh, the next thing that we found during our market research was these dry erase crayons. Now these are solid, which means that they don't evaporate, but they still, just like ink, write clearly, erase easily, and come in all sorts of colors, and they're just as cheap. So our first design concept after this uh, was a almost mechanical pencil-like uh, utensil. So when you push down the end, the, the wax would then be extruded from the tip uh, with a spring inside. So awesome. So this little animation here is just showing how the mechanism works. So you get that blue part. Um, that's what I'm going to be referring to as the tongs for the rest of this presentation. Um, so that's going to extend outwards and then release when it gets to the edge of that uh, wedge. And then the red uh, represents the wax. So you can see that it extends all the way and then kind of retracts a little bit but still sticks out um, more than it originally had. And then just, just the spring inside that compresses and then pushes the tongs uh, back to the wedge to hold everything steady. So the first uh, step after this design concept was to start prototyping uh, and create, start to iterate and create um, different versions until we found something that worked. So uh, one of the things that we had to work through uh, during this project is the fact that 3D printing uh, in the system here at BU has about a week to two weeks of lead time. So every time that we send in uh, a print, it can take between seven and 14 days to come back. So with the time scale we had uh, in this project, 
we had to be a little bit proactive and we would print multiple versions at the same time. So our original design concept uh, had four tongs with a thickness of 0.3 millimeters and we decided to print uh, versions on either side of that 0.3 so that we would uh, be able to iterate a little bit faster. So the biggest thing that we found with these prototypes is that they were really, really weak. So uh, I dropped one of these prototypes from about this high off the table and it just immediately snapped. <laughs> so uh, we, the next step that we had was to, uh, two things. We, what we did is we thickened the tongs and we changed it to be uh, two tongs, or four, from four tongs to be two tongs. So uh, because of the geometry of that, that just increases the strength and it makes them less likely to break. Um, and that is actually what I have here, is um, this prototype. And with uh, the tongs actually cut back into four. So what we found is um, we wanted to print it with two to see if it was necessary. And you can cut it into four, but you can't mold it into two once you have the print. Um, so because of the time constraints, again, we just felt that we needed to do it in this way. Um, so with two tongs, it's too strong. With four, it's uh, pretty much just right. Um, and this last thing that we did, what we did simultaneously with this one that I'm holding in my hand here, is we had an upscaled version. Um, so this was made kind of as a proof of concept, um, just in case, because there's some issues with the style of manufacturing and 3D printing. So this was made as a proof of concept, but uh, didn't really end up being super necessary as this prototype worked better than uh, expected. So the two main challenges are the shape of the wax. Um, when we're working at this scale and we're purchasing the wax directly from Crayola, it's really difficult to reform. It doesn't respond well to heat. So we had to manually reduce the diameter uh, to make it fit in this ergonomic grip. And the other thing is 3D printing. As I mentioned, it's a little bit slow uh, in this system. And the second thing is that its strength is really unreliable. So if you're not familiar, 3D printing uh, creates the pieces in multiple layers, and each one of those layers creates a really weak point, um, which is just a point of failure and reduces the strength, uh, the theoretical strength of the plastic. So for future work, uh, we would love to create this on a larger scale, which would allow us to improve our manufacturing methods um, and reduce the effort that it takes to get our wax to be the right size. Um, continued iteration of the mechanism just to make it a little smoother in places. And uh, finally, just a little bit more ergonomics things. As you can see, it's pretty flat cylinder right now, which is fine. Um, but, you know, we'd like to kind of improve the grip and also market it a little bit better. Have a logo on here, make it recognizable in some way. And lastly, I'd just like to acknowledge the help of Professor Francis DeBella, my advisor, my teammate, Yaren Her, and the two labs that we used on campus, uh, Epic and Scilab. So thank you. Thank you, I'll be taking any questions. So in the abstract, sustainability was one of the motivating factors behind using wax that's like replaceable. I'm wondering in terms of like future iterations and manufacturing the body itself, what kinds of materials were you and your team thinking about using? That's a good question. So uh, the biggest part of the wax being sustainable, which um, is that it's very easy to refill this container, right? So with the ink, it's more difficult to buy those cartridges and um, just because it's really messy and it's not super efficient to evaporate it through a tip in that way. But since the wax is like fully self-sustaining and you can put the wax right on the whiteboard, um, you can refill this in the same way that you would refill lead into a mechanical pencil, right? So um, the biggest thing with sustainability is that you could hold on to one of these casings and reuse it potentially forever. Um, so we would have to s produce and sell less of the casings to get the same amount of writing. Um, yeah, and we'll probably be using any type of plastic. Uh, what we've been using right now is PLA, uh, but that's just a 3D printing material. Any more questions? Going once, going twice. Oh, question. Oh, sorry. 
There it goes. Um, I just, I've asked this for a few other people too, but just wondering what were some of the, like, the challenges or surprises that came your way during this process? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So the biggest challenge uh, for our group was the fact that our theoretical um, calculations really didn't turn out to be true, um, which is a big part of that is, like I mentioned, 3D printing being not a great method of manufacturing for pieces that are this small particularly. Um, it doesn't have the right precision and uh, the layering creating weak points is definitely a factor when you're making pieces that need to bend elastically and not break. Um, so that was the, the most challenging aspect for actually designing the thing. Um, the other aspect that was a little bit difficult was just just the time frame. Um, you know, it, we weren't able to iterate as much as we would have liked, um, and you know, at the end of the day, we don't have a working product, which would be ideal. Um, but you know, we were able to learn a lot and take steps towards creating something that, you know, that would work. Yes. With the the questions of sustainability or reliability, um, et cetera, I know that there are similar types of products on the market, um, not maybe necessarily for holding the dry erase wax, but charcoal and other, you know, art right. um, materials. At the end of the day, through this process, um, do you, did you find that looking for an answer in the holder, the pin device, um, was still the direction you and your team think you should go versus um, working with the manufacturer to create um, wax pieces that fit other things that are already on the market, but repurposing those tools for a dry erase wax material? Um, sure, that's a good question. Um, definitely, it kind of accomplishes a similar goal. Um, I think our thing with this project was, you know, to come out of it with our own product, something that we could hypothetically uh, bring to market. Um, but yes, like we're looking to do the same thing as, as some of these Existing products do, uh, but we're looking to do it in a different way and with a uh, different focus. All right. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you.